Okay. Hello. So we have been looking at Fourier series. So we have given the prescription for writing down a Fourier series for a function which is periodic. We have also seen what the Dirichlet conditions are which guarantee convergence. So we will look at the issue of what happens if you took a Fourier series of some function and if you were to differentiate it. Is it legal to differentiate it term by term? Right? And when is it when is it legal? Right? That's the question which we will address in this lecture. Okay, so let's look at an example. Right. So this is the example which we have looked at repeatedly. So let's take this example f of x equal to 0 from minus pi to 0 and this is function 1 from 0 to pi and we have seen that this has the Fourier series representation half plus 2 by pi summation over n you know all the odd terms will appear sine of 2 n plus 1 times x divided by 2 n plus 1 right so we saw that this nicely converges and indeed because the Dirichlet conditions hold right so but it's if we blindly differentiate this term by term right so we could go ahead and do it right so if we the series that we will get the new series after differentiation you see that you know sine of 2 n plus 1 x when you differentiate it you will get this 2 n plus 1 which will come out and cancel with the 2 n plus 1 in the denominator right so you see that these coefficients as n becomes larger and larger are dying down because you have this you know 1 over 2n plus 1 factor right so i mean if you think of it as in general as it goes as 1 over n right the coefficient n now but the, when you differentiate it you know this cushion of you know dying down factors doesn't exist and so you get a series like this 2 by pi cosine of x plus cosine 3x plus cosine 5x so on and it's not hard to see that this is actually not going to converge right so we can quickly verify this by plotting a sequence of partial sums so let's look at this so i have plotted here you know just the first term then the first term plus second term then first term plus second plus third you know for one two three four yeah you know these positive four different partial sums if i plot it this is what it looks like so you see that you know there is you know evidently there is a lot of mess at the origin but also at pi at minus pi and also even at you know other points you see a lot of you know craziness it's not really you know uh, as the number of terms are increased it's not going to some nice uh, you know not a converging value right so there may be certain special points where you know you may be able to get some interesting you know special results at special points but the key idea here is that this is not a convergent series as you can also see from just looking at this function and so why is this happening it's not a surprise right because if you look at it you, some thought reveals that there is mess at the origin and at x equal to 1 right so if you differentiate so if the series is you know is reflecting the differentiating the series is reflecting the mess that appears when you differentiate this function itself right so it's not a problem if you differentiate in the region minus pi to 0 but at x equal to 0 there's a big problem and at x equal to 1 also there's a problem right it's because of the jump so it's not a legitimate you know uh, operation to do to do a term by term differentiation so Dirichlet conditions by themselves are not enough to you know guarantee a meaningful result if you do a term by term differentiation so but however it turns out that you know term by term differentiation is allowed if a function is you know uh, satisfies stronger condition it's not enough if it is Dirichlet but in fact you if your function if it is continuous it's not enough if it is piecewise continuous the whole the kind of function if it is continuous in the entire interval from minus pi to plus pi including at the end point so f of minus pi should be equal to f of pi and the derivative should be piecewise smooth right after all if you want a um, you know legitimate um, uh, 
Fourier series for f prime, right? So then uh, this is the condition. So you would expect that f prime itself should be like extremely well behaved. After all, you're going to be seeking a Fourier series for f prime of x. And so let's look at just one more example of this kind. So if I take f of x equal to minus x, you know, in the region minus pi to 0 and x in the region 0, 0 to pi, then indeed, you know, all these conditions hold. You can plot this function. It's a uh, it's continuous function and it is um, its derivative is also well behaved as you will see. So if you, if I work out the um, if I work out the Fourier series so now you see I have pi by 2 minus 4 over pi cos of x plus 1 over n cos 3x plus 1 over 2 25 cos of 5x so on. So now you notice that these coefficients are not just going as 1 over n but in fact there is they seem to be going as 1 over n squared. So when I take a derivative I, I still have you know 1 over n's which appear. So of course cosines will become sines, right? So that's not a problem, right? So an even function will become odd function and vice versa when you when you uh, you know take the derivative. That's not an issue. But what is key here, what has changed from the previous example is that now you have this cushion of 1 over n, you know, factors of 1 over n you know appear in uh, so as your coefficients become larger and larger, you know, the higher order terms, you know, mean less and less. So you can expect that this is going to converge and indeed it is true, right? So you can check that this is the same Fourier series you would get if you had, you know, started with this function f prime. This itself, if you took your as your function and worked out the Fourier series, you will, you will get this. So this is a legitimate um, you know, a case where taking a derivative of the Fourier series term by term gives you a meaningful result. As you can also check by plotting it, right? So the convergence of the partial sums is also something that we can verify, right? So I'm just looking at the first maybe four terms, you know, just the first term, then truncating after the second term, after the third term, after the fourth term, and I find that indeed, eventually this is going to go to this you know, the step function, right, it's, you know, this function, minus 1 from minus pi to 0, and it's a square wave, actually, right, so it's going to be a periodic wave. So, the point of this discussion was to, you know, is to tell you that you should be careful if you're going to take a derivative of this function, and, yeah, so if your function is, you know, if it can be written as a sinusoidal uh, Fourier series, right? So that means your function is not only periodic, but it's also uh, it's also odd, right? So then, um, um, yeah. So then you will have to demand that it goes to zero at both ends, right? So sine of pi is zero and sine of minus pi is zero. So your function itself, its value must must go to zero at both ends, right? So this condition. In, you can work out what the special conditions are if you say that your function is not only periodic but also even or if it is odd, both cases you can work out. If it is even, then it's going to be cosines, right? So those are special cases. And you might ask, what happens if we integrate, you know, Fourier series? Integration is, is a little more robust than differentiation. So if you are well, or original function is represented by a valid Fourier series, you can integrate, you know, both sides and you, you know, it's a meaningful relationship for both sides, right? There are two pieces of caution one must exercise. One is, of course, there is a free constant of integration which comes up, right? Where you're integrating the left-hand side and you're also integrating the right-hand side. So there is free constant on both sides. You have to fix both these constants to be the same, right? So that is kind of a trivial, you know, thing but it's essential to take care. The other is that um, what you get may not be a Fourier series, right? So you suppose you have something like A0, uh, you know, it's, you, start, you start with a constant and then you have, you know, all these terms in sines and cosines. The constant part when you do an integration, it's going to give you A0 times x. Now, that's 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 not a Fourier series representation, right? So everybody else, you know, sines will become cosines and cosines will become sines. 
but you will also have this one extra x. So if you had started with a function which did not have this a0, then what you get after integration would be a Fourier series representation of some other function, right, of the integral. But if you have a, you know, a constant here, so when you take the integral, in fact, so the function is not going to be periodic because of this, so it's not a Fourier series, but it's a valid expression, right. So this is just a comment which I'm making on the side, but this discussion was primarily about, you know, differentiating Fourier series and, you know, saying that one should be careful, right. It's possible to do term by term only if your condition, your, your function, uh, your, you know, is extra smooth. It must satisfy these conditions that we have laid down. Okay, that's all for this lecture. Thank you.